need to have a DNS configured on their machine because basically the uh, the user will let me just a remote desktop is showing down in a second because basically the user will have to type the URL over here right the user will just type the URL um, at the URL field so the moment you enter this the destination of this will always be the proxy right so uh, will always be the proxy so this is always the destination IP so which means to say that you satisfy already the requirement you have the IP uh, you have the URL so with regard to the client side you have the URL and then you have the IP for that URL and that is pretty much what the client need in order to access the website so with that even you don't have any DNS configured on on the client side you can in fact access the internet so who then performs DNS resolution it is the proxy so the proxy will then perform uh, DNS resolution right <clears throat> that is why DNS is very important in proxy <clears throat> so with that let's take a look at DNS settings in proxy now as you can see here right we have primary DNS uh, configured you can add more DNS server as you go along if you require multiple DNS of course it is advisable to have multiple DNS server um, in this case we have primary DNS right and you can actually define an alternate DNS server so let's say let's use 4.2 but the way this setup the primary alternate work is different from the way we think the DNS primary alternate behave uh, in most devices like for example even though your Windows machine so in Windows let's say you have your um, you have your uh, network settings on your Windows so typically you have primary slowing down you have primary and alternate right so basically this proxy how it works is that very slow okay so basically if you have this setting oh. so you can have preferred and alternate so which means if the preferred is down alternate would kick in right that is what we know about how the Windows environment works or other devices works but the proxy is different so even though you have both of them configured here and okay, let's try and test this so we have this test command in proxy So this is test DNS and then you can put a URL there, let's say cnn.com and let's just bypass the cache because bypass cache, so we don't we do not want to serve it from the cache. Enter. So it returns back with these IP addresses for CNN using this DNS server. Right? 10, 10, 2, 5. Now let's edit this and let's put a fictitious DNS server over here and see what will happen so this server 2.25 do not exist so let's try and perform DNS resolution again <clears throat> so if you see here the it says that the server is unhealthy the DNS server is unhealthy it says okay and because the DNS server is unhealthy if you notice the proxy did not fall back to the alternate it just displays an error 
the no answer in DNS response. So meaning to say it does not fall back to alternate DNS if your primary DNS is down. Okay? But let's try another test whereby we will try to put a non-existent domain. Okay? Enter. Okay? Still, it says timeout. Okay? Until it will give up. Okay, so let's try to do this this time. Let's put back the working DNS. Okay, let's apply this. So now we put back our working DNS. Let's go ahead and test this. So you see, still it's using 2 to 25 earlier, right? Whatever I put as a. Now let's try this this test this time. Okay, so it shows here that it says that when we are trying to query this this URL, okay, it tries the first DNS first, ten ten two dot five, and there was a name error. Okay? And because there was a name error, it calls back to the next DNS. And for some reason that DNS were able to respond back with an IP. Okay, so it tells us that only when there is name error, then it will fall back to the alternate. Otherwise, if the URL you are putting is a correct URL and there is no name error, it will never fall back to the alternate. So even though your primary DNS is down, it will never fall back to the alternate. That is why it is important that you need to put right at least two DNS server under your primary. Okay? So you need to put at least two DNS server in your primary. So in case one is down, then the other one will take over. Okay, so let's try and do this. All right, so as you can see here, we are trying to test against CNN. It tries the first DNS server. It is down, unhealthy. So that's why it falls back to the second in line on the primary. Okay, so that is something that Sometimes, because the administrator do not understand how the DNS works, they think that if you put primary and then alternate, if the primary is down, it will fall back to alternate. Actually, no. Whenever only there is a name error, then it will fall back to the alternate. Otherwise, it will not. All right? Another one is, if you can see here, the default domains will use this. So any domain, we have actually two groups, primary and alternate groups. So meaning any domain that you access will use this DNS. In proxy, you can actually create a new group. All right? And then you can put a DNS server in that group. And for this domain, it will query this DNS server. All right? So we can try and test this. So we have this, um, we have a server, I think, internal. Let's just type server example.com. Uh, okay. So in, indeed, 
So it's sending a query to this DNS server. Well, in fact, the server's IP address is also 2.5. So it uses this 2.5, right? 2.5, and here is the intranet. And we are actually connecting to server. So if you just type server, and then bypass, I forgot to put bypass cache. All right, we're unable to, to find it. Was not able to find it. So you see, I'm just trying to. Earlier, what I did is I used example that a server that example dot com. It uses this DNS server, right? Ten ten two five because that is my configuration here. Okay. Now, I just try to type a host server and it returns with nothing. Okay, it returns with nothing. Okay, but when I do this, when I go to my imputing new, and I type example.com, okay, fly. So I have now my example.com there as my imputing. Let's go again. So then server, enter. Okay, so what happened? So we are not able to find server uh, bypass cache, okay? Because it is not able to look for the domain on the primary, right? What we can do is if you put this, uh, okay, hang on. If you think, oh. Uh, yeah, so it queries this DNS server. Let's edit this first and let's just put five. Try this. Try again. Enter. Uh, invalid argument. So test DNS server. Let's remove this because bypass cache. I think it's just because it is wrong spelling. That is why. So I, I wonder why it is failing. So let's put 25 here, which is a fictitious DNS. So now I just type a host, right? A host. Let's enter. Okay. So even though I just type a host, which is server, okay, it queries the 2.5 because we have here an imputing that says if any host impute example.com, okay, it should work on the browser, but nowadays browser are basically trying to connect to the search engine whenever you type something on the browser. Oh, slow. Okay, so this empty thing. Another one I want you to take note about DNS is this. Let's say, um, let's say for example we have here to the 25. Uh, our 2.25 is, in fact, uh, so we have 2.25 there. Okay. All health checks says we're good. good. Okay, let's take a look. Health checks. Okay, so it's not good, of course. Um, so 2.25 there. Because to the 25 is down, whenever we try to query something, let's say CNN, it queries 8.8.8 .8 .8 because to the 25 is unhealthy. So eventually it will put a warning here, right? And we know that DNS is being monitored by the proxy. If you go to health check, okay, so we want to do this in a health check 
that tells the proxy that because even though my 2.25 is down, which is based on the health check, it is down, right? Based on the health check, it is down. Okay. What I do is I would like to prevent the proxy from always telling me that it is down. So what I'm going to do is I will edit this. And then I will disable this as healthy because the proxy is in fact healthy, right? Applying. Okay, so I disable it as healthy. Later on, it will become healthy. Okay, and I do not because I do not want to see warning. Otherwise, see it becomes healthy because whenever it's warning, it sends me alert, log, email, and so on. So I disable it as healthy. Okay. So let's take a look what will happen. So again, let me try cnn.com, enter. Enter. So cnn.com, send inquiry to 10.10.225. See, 10, 10, 10, 1, 2, okay, again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, again. One, one thousand. Okay, so you notice that at some point, at some point, we are having a delay of about five seconds. Right earlier, you notice because before it actually res respond back. Okay, we are getting a delay of about five seconds, and five second delay is actually very very long already. Data is five thousand milliseconds, so DNS resolution is five thousand milliseconds. If we talk about high volume of traffic, you see it's not displaying the result yet because it is disabled, healthy, that is five seconds. And five seconds, if you have high vol volume, is slow. So that is why, even though, okay, so you notice that we have no health issue here, right? Because we have disabled the health check. And we tell the proxy that we disable it and healthy, okay? Because if you're going to put this as enabled, it will complain to me it will say warning. So instead of disabling this as healthy, especially for DNS, disable it as unhealthy. All right. See, it bypassed immediately to the 25 because unhealthy. But because of that, we are now seeing a warning. Okay. So it bypass to the 25 species DNS because it is unhealthy. So we can be careful about disabling it and then putting us healthy because you have multiple DNS. So for the reason of not seeing a warning here, because it, you may have a delay of about 15, sorry, five seconds, and that is quite long. Okay. Now, some issue that could happen as well with regards to DNS is the slowness or sometimes the website is inaccessible and it says DNS error. One reason is that some website might change the IP address. Okay, so the IP address updated, the proxy cached the IP, and the proxy is not able to connect to those IP. So what you can do is you can delete the DNS cache. Now one way of deleting DNS cache is of course if you go to maintenance, system and disk, click on task, you can clear the DNS cache over here. Okay? Now in production this is not a way to go because the moment you clear DNS cache, it will actually clear all DNS cache entries. So the way to do this is via the
advanced URL. So you type DNS. Okay. So once here, then this is where you can delete the DNS entry. So let's try to take a look if you have DNS entry for CNN.com. So we have an IP address for CNN. Oh, we have four IP access here. So let's say we are having issue accessing CNN for some reason. Okay? And that we are not able to access CNN. So because it shows us with an error of DNS error. So what we can do is we can delete CNN here. Right? CNN.com. Okay? So delete the A record. So that is deleted already. So we don't have anything for CNN now. Display. Okay? So we don't have anything for CNN. And then you may want to access CNN again without bypassing the cache. If you want to verify if the web UI, the cache is not the same as the actual website, then you can put bypass cache. This time, we are going to set DNSCNN.com, which means to say that the proxy will retrieve CNN IP from the configured DNS server. So here, we are able to retrieve the IP address of CNN. And by then, if you type CNN here, now we have the updated IP address. If, for example, CNN IP changed. OK? So that is the way to go. Another one in terms of troubleshooting is that <clears throat> if you have multiple DNS, let's say you're having issue with DNS, you want to find out what DNS is getting you trouble. Okay? One way is you can use the CLI if, let's say, the web UI is already very slow. So we have some few advanced URL, advanced URL and then you can go to TCP um, DNS dash NS dash touch. Okay, let's see if this okay. Advanced advanced URL for slash TCP for slash DNS dash NS dash dash. Okay, so how come we're getting this? Uh, oh, okay, sorry. What's wrong? Show. Oops. Show advanced. Uh, forward slash TCP forward slash DNS dot NS dot touch. There you go. All right. So this one will, in fact, show air statistics on every DNS con uh, server configured in your proxy. So in this case here, we have 8.8.8 uh, .8 .8 DNS server. Um, 97 millisecond is the, it took 97 milliseconds for the lookup. Uh, no error for this DNS. Right, so this DNS seems to be good. Forward lookup that succeeds, 295 lookup succeeded. 4.2.2.2, 127 succeed. We have 12 fails, and no error also for this server. But it seems to be that it is very slow. It takes about 5,000 or five seconds before it's able to resolve. So a bit slower than 8.8.8. .8 .8. Now, how about 10.10.2.25? Let's take a look. So 10.10.2.25, the DNS failure is 25. Zero was succeeded. And as you can see, the longest 
is about 4 p seconds. All right, 40 seconds look up, zero succeed, meaning to say this server is not even responding with any request. And in fact, it is in timeout. Okay, and another DNS server we are using is 2.25. 91 succeed, only three failures, and it took about two milliseconds only. So in terms of all these three DNS, uh, four DNSs, we can conclude that 8.8.8 .8 is the DNS that is frequently used, 195 lookups, uh, zero fail, about 97 milliseconds, not bad in, uh, in terms of the lookup. And next is the 4.2.2. 127 succeed, 12 failed, but it's quite slow compared to 8.8.8. .8 and 2.25 is in fact down. We have a timeout for 2.25. 2.5 seems okay, 91 succeed, and 2.5 is quite fast, 2, sec 2 milliseconds, which is quite understandable because this is an intranet server. Okay, so this advanced URL, which uh, in a stat gives you an idea of how, what is the status of my DNS servers, right? How is my DNS server? are looking. So are they looking good or do you know they are responding very slow? All right, another one is the TCP. Okay, TCP and then DNS query uh, starts. So here basically you see DNS TCP query stats. Mostly A queries have been done. But one particular thing that you want to, we have about 1,500, 15,224 succeeded. And one thing that you want to pay attention here is this one. Server failure responses, name error responses, and timeout responses. So if this is very high, right, then some of your DNS server is not working properly, which is true because 2.25 earlier is down, right? That is why you can see this much failure. So that is what you want to take a look with regards to it. Okay, another one that could fail with regards to DNS is the reverse DNS lookup, all right? that is another thing that could fail. So for example, if if uh, let's say someone is trying to access using an IP address such as this one, what happened is the proxy will perform reverse DNS lookup uh, for this IP address. Okay? It will perform a reverse DNS lookup for this IP address. Now, if the DNS server is not responding with reverse DNS lookup because you use IP here, then you will see that the user will not be able to access the internet. Another reason why a reverse DNS lookup might happen is because of a policy trigger. Okay, there are policy triggers that will uh, in, that will tell the proxy to perform a reverse uh, DNS lookup. So for example, if you're looking for your client host as one of your trigger in the policy, client host, then the proxy will query the DNS server uh, for reverse DNS lookup if you're looking for a client host. Okay? And if you have also an entry in the access log, let's say the access log field, um, you edit the access log, 
and then you configure something in the access log you change the format and you use host or client host as well in the access log what the proxy will do is it will also perform a reverse DNS lookup okay so if you if you're gonna input an entry over uh, the log that says uh, entry that says end that says x dot client cs this is client dns this entry uh, will look for a client host via DNS server. Okay, so if the DNS server is not configured to perform reverse DNS, then it will create problem. All right, so that's pretty much the DNS. Okay, so the reverse DNS I mentioned to you already. And this one, okay, the CLI testing and the DNS imputing and the health check. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Next topic we have, and that is SSL interception. Okay, but first, uh, we have actually a lab for this DNS. We have two lengthy labs. What I suggest is you 